just arrived to the hotel and it is so pretty so so pretty i don't think i ever actually told you what the i guess agenda of this trip is but generally we are doing just two different places so we are currently in bangkok and at some point we will be moving over to chiang mai but for now we have just arrived in bangkok it is the evening here i have no idea what time it's actually meant to be in the uk what time zone my body's currently in but it is um it's been interesting because that is the longest flight I've ever done. I went from, I think, doing a four hour flight as my longest and that one was a 10 hour flight. And then on the way home, it's going to be 13 hours apparently. So uh, it's going to be an interesting one, but I'm very glad to be off that flight at last, especially because I had to travel down on another flight a little bit earlier. So I've just been traveling for well over 24 hours now, but we're here. And I think for this evening, we're just going to find some food and then chill before everyone else starts arriving. But I want to show you a little bit of the hotel because it's fun. So this is the entry point and we have a fridge freezer, microwave. We've got all these snacks, some drinks, a little tap. And then this is us. Of course, we've already made a mess. Very happy though to say that I have the correct wire attachment because I didn't think I did. But this is gonna be us. We can't really show you like the outside currently because it's dark, but yeah. And I can't show you the, the bathroom currently because Becca's in it. So yeah, I am so looking forward to just laying and actually sleeping. I'm so excited. <laughs>
day two of our itinerary about halfway through the day this morning we went to an organic farm and honestly it was the most zen experience that i did not expect to get from a farm it was just a really nice walk around some pretty gardens and we picked some of the vegetables and herbs cooked them ourselves and made ourselves like a, a big old lunch and it was just such a nice experience especially because everyone was so engaged and happy there like it was just it's such a nice atmosphere so I'm very happy to have had that experience. It was such a nice day and we're only halfway through the day. So it's currently the afternoon. We've got a few hours free in which I think I'm just gonna go and sit by the pool. I don't wanna go in the pool, but I just wanna like chill because this hotel is so nice. So I think I'm just gonna sit and maybe do a little bit of reading. And then later on, we have a street market tour at night in Tuk Tuk's. So that's gonna be really fun. I'm so excited and i have been loving all of the food so far so excited to have more of it and yeah i am also wondering how frizzy the hair is gonna get in this humidity because it's like 36 degrees i think <laughs> and very humid which i am used to in the uk maybe not the heat but the humidity definitely used to so it's not overly different but it's uh a trial for the hair at least <laughs> but it doesn't really matter i'll probably end up braiding it back for the most part anyway so yeah i'm gonna go and just chill for a little bit before we go on our next adventure <laughs>
j'ai été. Merci. À bienvenue. angles just keep getting better and better <laughs> so it is currently monday afternoon i want to say i don't know i've already reached that point in the holiday when i've got no idea what time or day it is so that is fun but it is our second full day and we actually have a bit more of a chill day today i think that it's probably the only day of the week that we have here in which we don't have something scheduled in for like most hours of the day so this morning we went to the Don Wai market and we visited a local temple there as well as the market itself and we also then took a boat ride down this little river to a local restaurant which was the restaurant run by a woman who won a season of Iron Chef Thailand which was really cool and she was so lovely everybody there was so friendly she was absolutely adamant that we needed to tell her if we wanted more food and she was like really trying to make us eat <laughs> but everybody's just so friendly and i just want to bring everybody back with me especially our tall guy jj he is just such a nice human and i feel so at ease knowing that he's just got us covered and like he's showing us so much about thailand and just telling us all of these anecdotes and you know filling us in on things that we might find interesting and just yeah, it's, it's a really nice group as well. Like it's such a calm group. It's so chill and so friendly. Everybody got along immediately. Honestly, having a great time so far. And now that we are back from the market and we've had some really good food, we have a few hours of free time. So some people have gone for another excursion. Some people are chilling by the pool. And I think I am going to join them now that I've rested a little bit. So I did just <laughs> have a bit of time chilling in bed because I am tired. And now that I've just lain down for a while, I think I'm gonna go downstairs and basically just do the same again, but by the pool. And I think I'm gonna start a new book. I haven't really been doing any reading. The reading that I did on the plane was for work, so nothing to mention here, but I wanted to start reading House of Flaming Shadow on this trip. And I have started listening to it, but I think I'm gonna talk about it more in my next vlog because that's when I'm gonna be able to actually like sit and take in what's happening. So I think in the meantime, I am going to start When the Moon Hatched by Sarah Parker because I have read another book by hers and it was a very like easygoing romanticy. This one is huge, admittedly. I don't think it's the sort of book I would usually pick up for a holiday sort of read because it is going to take me an awful long time to read it. But I don't know, this one's calling to me. I could not tell you why because I don't actually know anything about this one, but I know that a lot of people have been absolutely loving it and I want to know why. So I have gotten out of my Kindle and I'm gonna start reading that just here and there whenever we're traveling between places. We do have the sleeper train tomorrow, which is quite exciting. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so excited for the sleeper train. I've never done the sleeper train before and it's a very simple concept that is also genius. So for the rest of today, the plan is to just have 
an evening meal at the Blue Elephant restaurant, which is apparently an incredibly good and fancy restaurant. So I am excited to see what this is all about. So we just have our evening meal later today and then tomorrow we are doing a tour of i believe is an ancient town it used to be like a capital city of thailand that is now just ruins so we are doing a tour of that learning about the history i believe they have a market there as well that we're going to have a little look around and then once we are done there we are heading to the sleeper train so that we leave Bangkok and head towards Chiang Mai so I have actually just sorted out my suitcase because I wanted to make sure that it was all sorted and everything is ready to go it's not something that I need to worry about tonight and I also just wanted to make sure that I had easy access to everything in my suitcase while on the sleeper train I've actually moved some of my things into my backpack so that I don't need to go rummaging through that this sleeper train experience is honestly something that I am so intrigued about I feel like modes of transport is so interesting in other countries we were riding around in tuk tuks yesterday and it felt like so much fun just because especially there was a group of 17 of us so it almost felt like we were racing in the streets because we were just like overtaking one another and i don't know it was just something that we don't have in the uk so it felt really fun to us it was probably just completely normal to people who live here obviously and then we're just like oh my god this is great and then today for instance we went on a boat and it's just really interesting seeing all these different modes of transport that you don't typically have in your own day-to-day -day life so i'm also really enjoying just learning more about thai culture because i feel like it is just naturally a culture that is much more community based than anything in the UK like we have learned so much about the religions here and any sort of rituals that they have going on and just how they all help each other out and I feel like it's just something that really isn't that big a thing in the UK like no one really talks to each other they don't really talk to their neighbours and it's really nice to see it in person and like see people get along and it, it's strange because I feel like I've grown up in a way that if a stranger spoke to me I would find that quite jarring and like it's quite an unapproachable thing I don't want to be that way I really like seeing all of these people just get along so well and they all seem to know each other and I mean our tour guide is going to know everybody who we're visiting because he's the one who sort of like you know hooked us up with everybody and is taking us to all these like close-knit families and such but it just feels so much more welcoming approachable and very respectful and i think i just come from a place that is so <laughs> self-centered i guess that i can't help but see this culture and just sit in awe of it and just really appreciate it for that because it is so different from what i'm used to it's very much individual you go about and do your own thing and you don't really pay attention to anyone around you so yeah it's it's interesting i'm sure that both ways have both so its benefits and disadvantages but i think just seeing little pockets of other people's lives is always really interesting so yeah anyway i am going to go downstairs like i said and start reading my books so i don't know when i'm next going to check in because like i said today is kind of like the the only day of the week that we have like a, a bigger pocket of time but i will check in when i can and let you know how this book is going <laughs>
Let's go to get it. Hey! So we have arrived in Chiang Mai after an interesting sleeper train experience. It was not something I would rush to do again, but I also wouldn't not do it again. So yeah, it did just feel like a giant sleepover at one point. So that was quite funny, but I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it, but we are now at this beautiful hotel. I did want to have the leaves and everything in the background because I am currently sat on our balcony, but 
it's just a bit too bright for that. So today is going to be one of our few chill days. I was scheduled in to have a massage, but I'm actually not going to because chronic illness, my body's hurting, I don't want people touching me. So I'm actually going to skip that and just have a bit of a chill day before we go to the market this evening. We do have a pool, which I can hear some people from our group are currently at. So I think I'm gonna go and sit there. I'm not getting in the pool. I'm just gonna sit next to it, read for a little bit. And then I think a few of us are gonna have a little bit of a wander, a frolic, if you will, and see what's nearby. We've been given some coffee recommendations and just have a bit of a mooch around really. I know that some of the girls are going to get tattoos, which is exciting for them. And I did debate it temporarily, but I haven't joined them on that excursion, but I am excited to see what they come back with. And in the meantime, very happy to just sit and chill for a bit because I feel like I need it, honestly. <laughs>
love. So it is around 8.30 on Friday and it's our last full day here in Chiang Mai and in Thailand fully, at least part of the itinerary. I think me and Becca do have a few days trying to get home, <laughs> but this is the final day of our itinerary and today we are going to the Mei Kampong village, which is an agricultural community that is known for its tea cultivation. So we're gonna go there. We do have a little bit of a hike today and I am honestly so excited to see the views that we're going to see because I am very much a nature girly and I just want to see more of it. So that's the plan for today. Yesterday we just had like a very mixed bag of activities. So we were kind of just going from place to place, different temples. We cooked with a Thai family who were just so so incredibly sweet. Everyone is so friendly here. I'm gonna head on out and I'm sure I'll see some beautiful things. to the UK. I am so incredibly tired. It's currently about 10 p.m. and I have checked into what will be my final hotel of this trip because basically what I've ended up doing is having three different flights home. So we had to go from Chiang Mai to Bangkok, Bangkok to London and then I will be going from London to Edinburgh tomorrow and I've had a hotel between each of those flights. So this is my final one of the trip which I'm honestly quite glad about because I am really quite tired of moving around. <laughs> but I did just order myself room service because I was intending to go and find food, but the hotel that I've got is inside Heathrow Airport. And usually when I try to find food within an airport, it's after the whole check-in process so i wasn't entirely sure if i would be able to find food on this side of the the airport so i just ended up ordering room service and honestly it was the best idea because i am so incredibly tired this was my first long haul flight experience and honestly it was kind of rough <laughs> not because of anything like it wasn't terrible it was fine but I do have a chronic health condition and my god was I reminded of that on this flight home because my legs do be hurting now so yeah I'm just gonna stay here but I did read <laughs> this is hurting my arm bear with <laughs> let me shuffle things this this will do no it won't <sighs> okay so I did read the entirety of House of Flame and Shadow on the two plane journeys and 
That means I finished it not too long ago after having a very unhinged 13 and a half hour listening session. Well, no, it was more like a 12 hour session because I did watch a film part way through the flight just to break it up a bit. But oh my goodness me, I just... <laughs> It, that was that was a lot that was a lot to take in but i have now finished house of flame and shadow i'm gonna talk about it more once i am home because i feel like i'm still gathering my thoughts together but i have only rated it three stars which i think is the lowest i've rated a sarah j Mars book in a good few years now don't know how i feel about that but it's not that i didn't enjoy it I just have many a thought. Like I said, it is something I'll go into more once I am home because I do just want to like have a little sit down, catch up with you all as well. Once I am back in my own environment, I also want to show you some things that I got from Thailand because I'm very excited about them, but they are currently all still in my suitcase. And also just do a little roundup of the trip, a bit more chit chat, but for now I am very scatterbrained, very tired, and I'm going to go to sleep before my final flight. And I'll be back home tomorrow, which I am very, very ready for. <laughs> it is now thursday morning in rainy gray very cold scotland i got home on monday evening and honestly for the past few days because i went straight back to work the day after i got home and then pretty much after work i have been falling asleep because jet lag has gotten me i didn't think it would because it didn't really affect me while i was there but it seems to have gotten me. But I'm not overly mad about it because it means that I keep waking up at like 5 a.m. <laughs> and this works out in my favor for a couple of reasons because on Saturday this week, I actually need to get like a 6.30 train in the morning and I am not looking forward to waking up that early and being out and about that early, but the jet lag will help. <laughs> But aside from that, I have also been wanting to reset my sleeping schedule so that I did start waking up early so that once I am settled back into just normal life, I can start going to the gym again before work. So if I can maintain, maybe not 6am, 5am, whatever time I'm waking up, but if I could wake up at like half six, seven, I will be happy with that. So let's see if I can maintain it, but I don't know if I will mainly because that also means that I am getting so tired in the evenings so early by my standards that I don't like it because I'm not really doing anything after work like I have not read or anything since coming back I have pretty much just fallen asleep so yeah an interesting one but I had such a great time in Thailand it was so fun and the group that we were with just got along so well so quickly so much so that there are actually other travel plans afoot so that's always an interesting one to come away with because I feel like anytime you travel somewhere you just get more plans and more inspiration and more motivation to actually do said plans but I think we are all pretty determined to make it happen so we'll see how that goes and honestly a lot of my motivation to do these travel plans again is because our tour guy JJ he said that he would come as well and he's just the nicest person like he needs protecting at all costs he did such a good job as a guide but also just as a person is the sweetest little bean he does actually have a youtube channel so i will link that down below but it is all in thai currently he did say that he is gonna have english on there at some point but i do just want to give a massive thank you to jj as well for being such a great guide and person and just like we when we said goodbye, we sobbed. Like, I was so sad to say goodbye to JJ. And I don't think I've ever had that sort of reaction for someone who I've only known a week. So <laughs> it was a very bittersweet moment and I am still not over it, honestly. Ugh, my hair is annoying me because it just hasn't been right since traveling. <laughs> and I did actually realize I need to chop this quite substantially i didn't realize how long it was until i saw this photo of myself and was like since when has my hair touched my waist i somehow missed that fact even though it's on my head every single day so i am going to be chopping this probably up to about here soon so quite the 
quite the chunk of hair I'm cutting off. Anyway, besides the point, I wanted to show you some of the things that I got in Thailand because I feel like everything in Thailand is just so beautiful from their buildings to literally just their community feel, how everybody actually cares and chats to each other, but also in the things they make because everything I've bought was just beautiful and I could have bought so much more if I wasn't so overwhelmed by all of the markets. <laughs> Mainly because you guys know I love wearing my long skirts. Like my long skirts jumper combo is my jam. And Thailand is full of them so I did get a couple and I could have probably walked away with about 20 because it's really hard to find nice long skirts in the UK. It is so difficult and I will say if anyone has been to Thailand or is from Thailand, then you'll probably look at these designs and be like, that is so basic because they are covered in elephants and like <laughs> the typical Thai designs. But you cannot tell me that this is just not a beautiful skirt. So, I mean, I can't really show you these properly because they obviously look better on, but this is the design of the first one. And it does have this little like wooden belt situation going on and it's super elasticated very long. It does also have like a asymmetrical hem I want to say. I don't know fashion terms but basically it's longer at the back than it is at the front and this is just so beautiful. I am obsessed and then I did also get one that's more brown in tone because you guys know that I love my earthy tones. I mean literally just look at the screen right now it's all green and brown <laughs> but I have also gotten this brown toned one with little pops of navy which I found interesting but yeah this is the design on this one it's so beautiful and again the elastic is what I need because my goodness me is it hard to find elastic in the UK that is actually elasticated so I was really quite surprised that these actually fit because sizing in Asia is very different to sizing in the UK let me tell you but the elastic is pulling through and now I have two beautiful skirts and I'm very happy about that it's quite interesting actually because my favourite trousers that I have that I wear all the time and have actually repaired because I wore them so much that the seam split and I was like I can't do without these trousers I need to I need to fix them. They're like palazzo trousers and they are so flary and flowy I adore them they are the comfiest things I ever wear and I wear them all the time. I actually got these from a random market in London and I had never bought clothes from a market before because you can't really like try them on and stuff but I just kind of guessed with these and they have been my favourite thing ever since and now that I'm going to London at the end of this week I am determined to find that market again and see if I can find similar clothing because I genuinely have never worn anything more in my life and now I'm just like is this where I need to buy my clothes from like is random markets from people who actually create these things or you know bring in things from different cultures where I need to buy my clothes because the UK shops are not pulling through but the markets however those seem to be. So I am going to be on the hunt for more clothes at random markets in London on my next trip but that'll be in the next vlog whether I'm successful or not. <laughs> Besides the point, I got more things. So one little thing that I got is this little handmade bookmark that's made out of some sort of fabric. I'm not quite sure what. It has a little tassel. Let me see if I can open it actually. This was in a shop near one of the temples that we went to. Sorry this is really loud. Bear with. <laughs> Here we go. We are a group of bookish people, so of course we picked up bookmarks. And how beautiful is that? So I shall be using that in my next read. One thing that I am so obsessed with, well, actually I'm obsessed with everything. <laughs> I was gonna say the next two things and then I realized that the third thing I have, I'm also obsessed with, so. Basically I bought a bag and I didn't expect to come away with something like this, but I typically use tote bags and I'm fine with using tote bags. But when we were in Chiang Mai, there was basically just a lot of like rattan stores and crochet stores and you could see the people hand making these things in store. And I just saw this bag and again, I like my earthy tones, I like warm tones. This is actually showing up quite bright on camera, but it's like a dark red, almost like a burgundy color. And I just think that this is so beautiful, especially with my sort of style. So you do have a little like, you can close it, there is a little clip here with a wooden bead. You also have this tiny like jellyfish looking thing. <laughs> and this is so spacious as well. I obviously would have to bear in mind the fact that it is crochet, so around these flowers there are like bigger gaps between the woven design, so obviously I couldn't like put any small pens in or something because they would just fall out, but I have a feeling that I'm gonna use this 
so often, all the time. It's so beautiful and it's really sturdy. Like I can feel the weight of this. I can tell it's not gonna break just the second I use it and I just think that this is beautiful. I've never had anything like this, so I'm just like, wow. People are so creative, so talented. And the same goes for this. Let me get it out of the bag. This is just a small little like pouch of some sort that I think I'm gonna use as a makeup bag, but look at the design on this. The colors I am so, so obsessed with. The second I saw the colors, I was like, that's a bit of me. I will be taking that, thank you. And in the store as well, you could see the lady who was making them quite literally just was on a table at the front making things. And I was like, fascinated. <laughs> and yeah, the second I saw this, I just zoned in on it and was like, I am not leaving without that. So I did not. And this is now going to be my makeup bag. It's so soft, so squishy. And the design is just absolutely beautiful. I am so obsessed. And then finally, this one isn't a handmade thing as far as I'm aware, at least. And it is a little bit of a silly thing <laughs> but when we were in Bangkok we came across do you know the what are they called like the they're almost like coin machines where you put in money you turn a thing and then some sort of toy comes out I don't know but we came across one of those and this one was for my neighbor Totoro so I have a little Totoro <laughs> and I was very excited about this because I've seen people like my um TikTok, I follow a lot of people who just do like general daily vlogs of whatever life they're living and there is someone who I follow who has just moved to Tokyo and she is obsessed with Studio Ghibli and she's got loads of these. She tries to collect them all. So the second I saw them and recognized them, I was like, I need one and I got very excited and honestly, this brings me so much joy. This is the one I have. Look at him. Isn't he so cute? So he's gonna sit on my desk as my little work companion. And he just brings me so much joy. <laughs> my Nibba Totoro isn't even one of my favourite Ghibli films and if there are other things like this for the other films then I will find them somehow. <laughs> but this one at least I am happy to have. So that's brought me so much serotonin and I am very happy to have brought him home. Now I think that whenever I did any sort of update I mentioned a whole bunch of books. I know that I said that I was starting When the Moon Hatched. I didn't continue that. I'm literally about 10 pages in, so I have no thoughts on that. But I did read the entirety of House and Flame and Shadow, which feels particularly unhinged considering it's 800 pages. I mean, I had nothing else to do on a 13 hour flight. I did start it on my way there so I didn't just read it in 13 hours that would have been impressive but I did read the majority of it within 13 hours so uh it was interesting and I'm not gonna go into spoilers or anything I do have many spoiler thoughts but I'm just not gonna I'm not gonna share them at least not here but I will give you some general thoughts because I rated this three stars and I think that's the lowest I have ever rated a Sarah J Mars book. There might be one of the Throne of Glass books that's three stars or maybe a 3.5, but I don't know actually. I feel, sorry, I'm looking up there because that's I've got an entire Sarah J Mars shelf up there. I feel like the lowest before this was actually a four star and it was like a low four star, but this three star without like, it's not a thing for debate. I'm going to put that down because that's heavy. <laughs> I expected more I think. My main sort of a difference that I could tell in terms of my investment of this series versus how invested I was in other series is that by the time you're three books into any of her other series it feels like an entirely different story from when you started. So if you think about having read three books of Throne of Glass or read the three books in the Akatar trilogy, if you think about where that plot starts and where you are three books in, they are completely different stories. This series however, the plot of the first book is still continuing and it's still the main sort of theme by the time we get to this book and when the books are this long like they're all about 800 pages long if not more i'm just kind of like why have we not moved on to something else by now like sarah j mars i feel like is really talented at naturally progressing the story in a way that these huge changes happen and yet it does feel like a natural progression and yet in the series we're still talking about the same thing. <laughs> we still have the same aim as we do in the first book. And I'm kind of just like, for why? This is many pages. I'm getting a bit bored now. I do feel like as well, she maybe tried to do a bit too much in this because we have so many characters, so many perspective switches, world building things that are 
discussed and explained. And with each character, they've kind of got their own little side plot. And so we just have a lot going on and I feel like it might have been just a bit too much in this one. So I was just kind of like, why, why am I hearing about all of this? And I know that Sarah J Mars is known for her like huge character groups. She's always got at least seven main characters, I swear. In this one, I felt it. it kind of, I could have done with less people. I'm also just no longer feeling like the stakes are that high and I don't love all of the character dynamics, character relationships that we see, especially one in relation to Rune. So Rune is my favourite character. I adore him so much. He is just the softest emo boy <laughs> and I don't like his story. I, I just, I don't like it and so I'm wounded. <laughs> very bitter about that. That's all I'm gonna say on it. I do have many thoughts on him, but yeah, it's an interesting one. And it sounds like I hated the book. I did still enjoy it. I still rated it three stars. That means I enjoyed it. It was good, but I'm kind of just like, meh. I think though, when you've got this many Sarah J Maas books, and I have read all of her other books, I knew I was going to enjoy it. Like something terrible would have to happen for me to dislike a Sarah J Maas book at this point. But I've already said everything that I love. Like I love the cocky conversations. I love how snarky everyone is. I love how addictive it is. Like it is a very page turner plot that she manages to write every time. And there is just something about Sarah J Maas's writing style that is very engaging with a lot of people. And that's why it's done so well. But I've already said this about all of her other books, so the only differentiating thing for this one for me is that I actually have negative things to say about it for once, and I don't know how I feel about that besides sad. So a lot of people from what I've seen have been a bit like, eh. Or it's kind of gone one of two ways. People either have rated it five stars, have loved it, or there's some people who have been disappointed by it. I do unfortunately fall in the latter. I think as well a lot of the reunions that we see between people and like the big moments didn't really feel that big. So I honestly just was less invested and considering I had nothing else to focus on for 13 hours, it should have been incredibly easy for me to just fall into this world and forget I was reading and enjoy the book. Whereas I actually felt every single hour of the 13 hour flight home because I was like, this book is never ending. So yeah, bit of disappointment on my part, but like I said, I did still enjoy it. I don't want to be just like absolutely slating it, but it's like I said, that is the sort of differing thoughts that I have on a Sarah J Mars book for once and so that's where I I landed I guess. Because as well the 13 hour flight home only got me back to London and I stayed overnight in a hotel in London and then flew home to Edinburgh. So I did actually start reading both Fairbam by Sarah Alarifi which I am about 130 pages in and I'm actually really enjoying it. I am finding the character dynamics really interesting because we're following two sisters and I feel like it's been such a long time between me reading about main characters who are related to each other. I mean, besides Sarah J Maas, but <laughs> like they do have a very obvious sisterly dynamic in which they are fiercely protective of each other, but really wind each other up as well. And I feel like it's really fun to read about. What I will say is that I'm listening to the audiobook and I kind of hate the audiobook narrator's voice for Lettle specifically, because she is a prophecy diviner person. She is feeling very protective over her beliefs in prophecy and wanting to work with prophecy. And yet every time she reads a prophecy, the audiobook narrator is making her sound bored. And I feel like she should sound more reverent for what she's doing. She should sound more, I don't know, like she's amazed by something and she's just not. And I get that she is frustrated by some of these prophecies, but I still feel like she shouldn't sound bored, you know? Like, sound frustrated, don't sound bored. So I'm not loving the audiobook for this, so I might actually switch to reading this one physically, but like I said, I've not really been reading much since getting home because I've just been falling asleep. I did also pick up The Vegetarian by Han Kang because I was just really in the mood for either a Korean or a Japanese fiction book. Every so often I get these phases, I feel like they do have a very specific tone, each of them, that I just want to revisit and they do tend to be quite teeny tiny books that I pick up. So I ended up finding The Vegetarian by Han Kang in the bookstore in the airport and I'm only about 30 pages in but already I'm just like, oh my god, so many thoughts. <laughs> I will probably mention that more in my next vlog because the likelihood is I'm going to read the rest of that during my trip down to London. So I will save my thoughts for that for the next vlog. Thoughts are to be had. It's an interesting one because I feel like during my travels, I didn't read anything during the week, but during the actual traveling part, I had so many hours to spare that I was like, let's read everything. And that I did. So those are my like rapid speed thoughts on the books that have been 
around in my life for the past week. I would love to hear your thoughts on House of Flame and Shadow. Without spoilers, if you can manage it down in the comments, just because I don't want other people to be spoiled while browsing through the comments. But also if you visited Thailand, I would love to hear that. Or just whatever your most recent trip to another country, a new place, tell me all about it down below because I think that I personally am really bad at finding inspiration. I will just say I'm gonna go to these random places. Like there's nowhere in particular that I'm like, I absolutely need to go. But if somebody suggests I go somewhere, I will get very excited about going and go. So <laughs> I'd love to hear all about your own travels, if you've got any travel plans upcoming. And in the meantime, I'm gonna stop yapping away at you. If you made it this far into the video, then leave an airplane down in the comments or an elephant. Is there an elephant emoji? If there's an elephant emoji, then leave an elephant emoji because they are on every single like Thailand design ever. <laughs> but for now, I'm gonna love you and leave you. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will chat to you again very soon. Goodbye.